Hi, my name is Kerry Holzman, and today I'm going to show you how you can easily upgrade your old slow mechanical hard drive in your laptop to a faster, much more reliable solid state drive and transfer your operating system, all your data, and everything so that you don't have to reinstall a thing. It'll look and act exactly as it did before, except be a lot faster. And it's so easy, anybody can do it. Let's get started. I was contacted by a customer who wanted to determine if their laptop could be upgraded or improved. They said it was running slow. They purchased this Lenovo branded laptop about 2013. It's uh, 2018 now. And it's actually decked out pretty nicely. It's got a Core i7 processor, but for some reason it's got a mechanical hard drive. Although in 2013 I can understand why solid state drives were still pretty pricey back then. But the puzzling thing is it only has 4 gigs of RAM. Now he did upgrade it from Windows 7 to Windows 10. And um, the question that he had is, is it worth upgrading this or should I buy a new laptop? Well, after figuring out that it was low on RAM and it has that mechanical drive, uh, my answer to the customer was, it's really up to you. Uh, solid state drive, a 500 gig solid state drive is around, uh, I'll say around $200, somewhere in there. And uh, four gigs of laptop memory DDR3 that this takes runs about forty fifty dollars and then there's labor so when you add that all together is it worth putting that into an older laptop or would you be better off buying a new one uh, it really depends on who you are and what your needs are for this customer they said absolutely let's do it so we've got a 500 gig Samsung solid-state drive uh, well there are other solid-state drives that can be purchased for less money when you hear about people that have failed solid state drives, they generally have one of the cheaper ones. I only use Samsung and SanDisk branded solid state drives, primarily because of the warranty and reliability. I don't mind paying a couple extra dollars if it means peace of mind in the unlikely event that you're going to have a problem. There are other brands that are more known for having failures. I won't mention their names, but suffice to say, if you do not follow the steps exactly as I outline them in this video, um, then you shouldn't expect the same results that I get and my customers get. So there's a reason why I pick these brands, and if you choose to adopt that as your own, well, that would certainly be welcome. If you choose to use a different brand to save money, uh, it may work out just fine or it may not, but that's your gamble for you to decide. If you follow, once again, my steps, there's not much of a gamble here. So uh, that's why I use Samsung or SanDisk SSDs only. Uh, Samsung being my primary choice and SanDisk being the budget choice. And then as far as the RAM goes, I've got uh, four gigs of DDR3 RAM that should be compatible. This is made by Samsung. And you might be asking yourself, how did you know that you could upgrade the hard drive and how did you know you could upgrade the RAM? So let's cover that right now. The first thing I do when I get a customer's laptop is clean it. And that means running utilities on it like CCleaner or BleachBit. Uh, it means uh, deleting all the temp files that CCleaner and BleachBit may have missed emptying out all the system restore files, get that nice and clean, empty out the software distribution folder that all your Windows updates went into. That's all covered in a different video, so I'm not going to repeat that here. I also make sure all the Windows updates are in place. Uh, I make sure that the BIOS on the computer has been updated to the latest version to avoid any potential problems that a newer BIOS fixes. I'll also use something like a snappy driver installer and update uh, any drivers that need to be updated. I veer away from any uh, peripheral drivers, things like printers, mice, webcams. I don't update those drivers. Um, and then the only one I avoid would be USB drivers. Uh, generally speaking, there'll be a driver update for your chipset, maybe a driver update for your video card, sound card, network card. I, I go ahead and do those updates. Once all that's done and the computer is is cleaned. I've, I've looked through, you know, run malware bytes through it, run NCSoft, make sure that there's no malware in there, make sure that it's clean, 
uh, uninstall any unneeded programs. That means taking off Java, taking off Flash, taking off toolbars, taking off the McAfee security screen or whatever the security thing is. People get it bundled with other downloads, take that off of there. And if there's things I'm not sure of, I'll often contact the customer and ask them if they know what it is. If the customer doesn't know, at that point, it's a matter of a judgment call as to whether or not to leave it or remove it. So what I'm trying to do is get the computer as clean and as lean as possible to see how it operates. So I've already done that with this computer. And let's see how fast it boots. Let's cover that first, and then we'll talk about how I can determine what hard drive to put in and what RAM to put in. So here I've got my clock, my timer. And I'm going to hit the power button and hit the timer. Now, one of the things you'll notice here, let's see if you can see that, is I've got the power adapter plugged in. And that's because the vast majority of my customers, many of them only are in Arizona for the winter months. And many of them have laptops so they can move the laptop easily from their winter home to their summer home back and forth. They rarely ever use the laptop on battery. They almost always have it plugged in. And as a result, after the laptop is two or three years old, these batteries are shot. And the customers rarely ever care because they never run it on battery. Now, there is going to be a login screen that comes up that's going to kind of interfere with our time uh, assessment. And I will blur out the customer's email address, which is on the login screen, and then put in their password so we can continue the boot up process. And then after that, I'm going to switch over to, I've got an HDMI cable right here. And I will switch over to the on-screen uh, capture with the HDMI cable. Unfortunately, many of these modern laptops, the video outputs don't work until Windows loads. So if I have to boot outside of Windows, then I'll have to point a camera at the screen so you guys can see what's going on. So, all right, so uh, you've seen the clock where it was at. I'm going to step up in front and I'm going to enter the customer's password. And there we go. Now, we've got the desktop up. I haven't been paying attention to the time. That's your job. If you guys want to look at that, you can get an idea of how long the machine takes the boot. It really doesn't matter to me at this point because I know a solid state drive is going to be four to five times faster than what ever this thing is doing in the best case scenario. Now in all fairness, the machine runs really well. Most of the time when people bring me laptops, they're bringing me a laptop that's about this age, about five or six years old. But the problem is they bought a bottom of the line laptop, just an entry level laptop. When it was new, it was cheap. Five years later, they want to know how they can make it faster. And if this was a Core i3 laptop, which many are, or an AMD laptop, I would not recommend putting the money into it. But because this is a Core i7 processor, it's a really good processor. The laptop is in excellent condition. And I do advise, it is my recommendation, that if it were mine, I would do the upgrades I'm about to show you. I think it'll easily add three to four years of life onto this laptop, if not more, providing it doesn't get dropped or stolen or have anything spilled on it. And um, anyway, so the question then gets to be, well, how do you know uh, what the laptop has? How do you know what the version of the BIOS is? How do you know that information? Well, I use a utility called CPU-Z. Uh, I've actually got it on the desktop here, but for the sake of, of showing you, uh, let's, let's plug in to the video out. Let me get rid of this. And let me give you guys a video feed of the screen. Okay, so here we have the desktop. And you'll see I've got CPU-Z right here, but I'm going to delete this. And we're going to go and grab it. I'm going to show you how I do that. So let's just get rid of that. And um, <clears throat> let's empty the recycle bin out. There we go. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my browser. This customer has uh, Internet Explorer hooked up here. And we'll use, use that. It's fine. And we're going to go to Google. 
And I'm just going to type in CPU Z and hit enter. And the first link that comes up here is CPUID.com. That's what I want. And we scroll down where it says download, and I want the zip English version, which includes the 32 and 64 bit version. Everybody should be using 64 bit at this point. So I click on that, and then it says uh, the file's ready for download. I click download now, and we're going to save that. It's a very small download. We can click view downloads and then go to CPU Z183. That's the current version. Of course, uh, this video will be up for a long time and I'm sure that version number is going to continue to get bigger as time goes on. These are the contents of the zip file. We're going to extract all those contents. Just hit extract. It's going to put it in our downloads folder. We can move it out of there if we want to and we'll just close these other windows out. So here we are with CPU Z. There's the 32-bit, there's the 64. We're going to double click on 64 and click yes on this and then we can close that window and now it's analyzing all the information in this laptop so we can see which CPU it has the code name of it um, uh, just you know the, the, the speed it's running at its current speed it slows down in order to stay cool when you don't uh, aren't, aren't using any real processing power the caches tab I typically ignore it, it doesn't matter it's whatever's built into the CPU so there's no information that that's useful to me. The main board tells us our BIOS version right here. It says brand is Lenovo, version is 2.04 here, and then the date that that BIOS came out. And that's how I know uh, what to compare against the, the Lenovo support website for this model of laptop to determine if I have the latest version. Up under memory, you'll see it's got DDR3 4 gigs, it's in single channel mode which tells me that there's only one chip installed and it gives me the frequency and clocks uh, but this is the information I really want the information I really want is the serial presence device or SPD information of the RAM and you'll see it comes up blank well that's because it defaults to memory slot 1 and this laptop has two memory slots so we'll drop to memory slot 2 and that tells me everything I need to know to buy a compatible memory module. It's a, a 4 gig module. Use, it's at speed 12800. And uh, that's the only other thing I would want to know is the CAS latency, which on this one uh, is 11 here. And if I just buy another DDR3 uh, 4 gig module that's at the same speed and latency, has latency of 11, the speed of 12800, uh, and I'm not sure why CPU-Z uh, shows that at 800, it should be 1600, but maybe that's a, a technical thing, I'm sure. Somebody in the comments will explain to me why that's doubled, um, but this this normally, there's two ways that this can be said. It can be said as 12800 or at 1600. I've never seen it listed at half before, so again, I'm not sure why CPU-Z does that. But anyway, that's how I know what to buy. Uh, you can also go to a website like Kingston or Crucial. So we go up here, and Kingston makes memory, so we go to kingston.com. Now to find memory that's compatible with your laptop, to find out how much memory total your laptop can see, and, and this is very specific to laptops only. Uh, you'll go under, uh, let's say I think it's under memory, right up here, and then we're going to go to desktop notebook memory. And then you can do a search here or we can do something called uh, system specific. And that's where you can put in the make and model of the laptop you've got. So in this case we've got a Lenovo, so right here, find memory by system. It's all alphabetized. We want Lenovo. This is a G500S laptop. So there's no G500 listed. There's a G570. So how about just G series notebook? And this shows a maximum module available of eight. 
and then there's a four gig module. So it appears this you can either use the two memory slots to go to 16 gigs or the two memory slots to go to eight gigs. Or you could mix four and eight and get 12. Those are your options and that's it. So in other words, once you put in two eights, that's as much memory as you could possibly have. Now for this laptop with only four gigs, I don't think the customer will see a benefit going to 16. So we're just gonna do four gigs. Now you don't have to order it from Kingston. You could order it from Crucial or you can go to eBay or, I mean, I don't recommend buying computer parts off eBay just because of warranty and return issues, but um, you'll also notice they do list the speed at 1600, not the 800. You'll see the CAS latency is 11, CL11 right there. Um, but as long as we have these specs, DDR3, 1600, 90 ECC, CL11, with the right amount of uh, memory, four or eight, then it should be compatible with what we already have. So if you want to order it again off Amazon or Newegg, you, you don't have to, you're not obligated just because you use Kingston's tool here that you have to order it from Kingston. Then our prices do tend to be a bit more than their competitors. As you noticed, the memory I purchased is from Samsung and I got that with Amazon Prime. So I had it the next day after I ordered it. So that is a very useful utility, the CPU-Z. Uh, it's completely free. You always see I use the portable version. I'm not installing anything, and that's how we know what memory to put in. Now, when it comes to looking at the hard drive, there's a couple different ways we can do that. I'm going to close this out. Let's bring up um, Google again. We'll go back to Google. And I like to use a utility called Crystal Disk info. So I'm just going to type that right here. In fact, I don't even have to finish typing it. You'll see it comes up automatically. And here it is. Crystal Disk Info from Crystal Do World. I click on that link. Okay, so we're going to scroll down and ignore these other editions, the Shizuku and Kurei, Kurikai. I'm not sure how that's pronounced. These are this is a Japanese culture thing. You can look up Shizuku. It's a whole, there's a whole Wikipedia on Shizuku. Um, it just adds this anime girl to the program. I don't know why anybody would find that necessary. So ignore those. We want the standard edition. So we're going to hit the download button right here in the middle. And it's going to ask us which one we want. Of course, we want standard and I want the zip file. And then we're going to save that when it offers us, it'll say you want to open or save it. We want to save it. There we go. And it just takes a moment to download. It's a small, portable program. You don't have to install anything. Now let's open it and extract all, and then extract. Well, that's extracting. I can close that window and close that window. And it'll open the folder that it just uh, extracted to just as soon as it's, as it's completed here in just a moment. Bingo. And then we want Disk Info 64-bit edition. So we'll double click on that. Oops, double click, there we go. Are we sure we want to run it? Yes. And then I'm gonna close that window. And what it tells us is the hard drive that's installed in here, well, I thought it was a terabyte. It's just a 500 gig Toshiba hard drive. It's SATA 300 and it's got a 5400 RPM rotation speed, which is pretty slow. 7200 would be preferred, although in a laptop it does generate more heat and eats more battery power. So uh, another benefit of solid state drives. It's been turned on 1954 times in its lifetime, and it's been on a total of 1261 hours, which is not much at all. So it appears that when they turn this on, they have it on less than an hour for at least a third of the time, which is interesting. And that represents drive letter C and drive letter D all on this one hard drive. The health status is good and it's running at 33 degrees centigrade. Now, if the health status is anything other than good, you should replace the hard drive. There, you should not attempt to repair a hard drive. They really cannot be repaired. Uh, there are programs like Spinrite that can, that can cover up the damage and may give you a little bit more life, but it will still fail. It's still in a failing state. It's just whether or not you choose to close your eyes like, I don't know, an ostrich burying its head in the sand. Um, I don't recommend that. 
and we're changing this hard drive out strictly for performance reasons. There's nothing wrong with it, it's just really, really slow compared to everything else in this laptop. How slow? Well, let me show you. Let's, we're done with this program, so let's close it out and let's go back to Google and we're going to download a program called Crystal Disk Mark. Oops, typing that in the wrong space, aren't I? Let's go up here, Google. And here we'll type in Crystal Disk Mark. It's already the third option down. Again, it's the same company, this Crystal Do World. Okay, so here we are with Crystal Disk Mark. Once again, they have a standard edition and a Shizuku edition, which just adds Shizuku, the anime girl, <laughs> to the program. Uh, we don't want the anime girl. We want the professional version here. So we'll hit download. And it's bringing up Crystal Disk Info for some reason. So we'll scroll down and there, yeah, okay. So all the downloads are on this one page. So could have grabbed them both at the same time. So right here is Crystal Disk Mark, currently version 6.0.0. .0. And we're going to download the zip file. And we'll save that. Once again, small file should be relatively quick to download, even on a slow internet connection. We're going to open that zip file up and then extract everything in it into a folder. And I just go with all the defaults on that. And I can close that window now and close this window. There we go. Now we've got disk mark 64-bit and 32-bit. I want the 64-bit. I'll double click. And then I hit all. And what that's going to do is that's going to test the reads. These are all reads on the left and then different writes. These are all writes on the right. If you have multiple hard drives in your system, which I doubt if you've got a laptop, but you can choose which drive you want to test right here. But because we only have one, I didn't have to adjust anything other than hitting the all button. And then you just leave the computer alone for a few minutes and let this run and we will see our speeds of this mechanical drive. And after we've upgraded to the solid state drive, we will run the same test again to compare uh, just how much faster and worthwhile it is to upgrade your mechanical drive to a solid state drive. And, and honestly, just for the reliability alone, it's worth doing it. Now I've just skipped ahead to the end so you don't have to sit there and stare at this to finish. But you can see our write speed is 114.8 megabytes, not megabits, megabytes. It's a capital B megabytes per second. And then our write speed, which is typically always lower than the read speed, is at 108.6. Uh, never mind the rest of the numbers, just, just pay attention to those, those two top numbers. And now we can go ahead and close this out. Okay, so that's how I get all the information I need to know before I offer any solutions to the customer. And uh, with that, I went on Amazon, as I mentioned, I ordered the memory module and I ordered the hard drive, which as it turns out is the same size uh, drive he has now. Uh, this is just a solid state version of it. Uh, not only are solid state drives far more reliable than mechanical hard drives, they use less power, which is good on a laptop's battery life. They don't generate as much heat, and they're much, much faster in reading and writing as you're about to witness. Now, um, I like to use a program called Acronis. And Acronis makes a program called TrueImage. And what I do is I buy the cheapest version of Acronis TrueImage I can find. I never spend more than $30 for it because there's always a new version every year. So I currently have a Cronus True Image 2018 on this flash drive. And what I do is I purchase the product. Again, I typically buy at Amazon and there will be a link to it in the video description below this video. And I, uh, gen I order the retail version so I actually get sent a box. And in the box is the software, and I don't use that software at all. The only thing I want from inside of that box is my product key. Go to acronis.com and create an account and register your product key that was included in the box of Acronis Trimage that you bought on Amazon or wherever you bought it. And make sure you remember your login name and password that, that you've created for acronis.com. Like any other software, whatever is included in the box that you received is probably outdated. 
Acronis 2018 is the um, name of the software, but it doesn't really tell you the version. There may be four to eight versions of Acronis 2018 before Acronis 2019 comes out. And what you want to do when you register that product key with Acronis.com is it offers you the ability to download the latest version. And one of the options to download is a rescue uh, ISO image. Download that rescue ISO image, which right here is called bootable media. That's what we're going to use to make our bootable flash drive. And as you can see here, it's about 645 megs. I'm just speeding past the download here so we can hurry up and, and get to the end. Now, once this download is completed, the next thing you want to do is download Rufus. Rufus is a free utility. Uh, we're going to just type in Rufus right here on the top of the search bar and uh, that defaults to my Google search engine, which uh, offers Rufus as the very first option to choose from. And here on the Rufus site, if we scroll down, we want to download the portable version of Rufus, which is right here. So click once to start that download. It's a very small program. As you can see, it's already downloaded that quickly. Now using these two files we just downloaded, we can create a bootable USB flash drive with the Acronis True Image software on it. So the very next thing we need to do is find a USB flash drive to use for this. Now you really need a minimum one gig flash drive and it doesn't matter what size above that you use, but be aware you won't be able to use the flash drive or any other space on the flash drive for anything other than Acronis. So if you use a 16 gig flash drive, for this 658 megabyte file we downloaded, the other 15 gigs are, will be completely unusable to you unless you erase the flash drive and therefore erase the rescue disk that we just made. So I'm going to use a two gigabyte flash drive because that's what I have and we're going to just go ahead and plug that in now to a USB port on the computer. Next I'm going to go ahead and just click right here on the Rufus executable file we just downloaded and then uh, this screen looks like it wants a lot of information but there's really just three things you need to check one make sure that you've selected the right flash drive the right destination if you have numerous flash drives installed for example you definitely want to make sure you've selected the correct flash drive because this is irreversible Next, we need to supply it with an image. So right down here, it says create a bootable disk using. Click this icon. Go to your downloads directory, which is where it defaulted. And there is our ISO image that we just downloaded. This file here is the same as this file here. They're the exact same file. So we're going to double click on that. Now it's defaulting using an ISO image, which in most cases works fine, but uh, I've also encountered some images that don't boot properly when using the ISO image uh, format. So I have found that using DD image is uh, much more reliable when using it to create the Acronis uh, bootable media. So I'm going to go ahead and select that, and then I'm going to hit start. Now we are going to get a warning here. It says all the data that's currently on that flash drive is going to get wiped out. It's going to be destroyed. And if you click OK, it's going to, you're approving that. So again, make sure you're at the right target drive and then click OK. Now this just takes a moment and we will just fast forward through this to get right to the next step. That's all there was to it. With the flash drive created, go ahead and click close, and we can also close out this window and eject the flash drive, and you now have an Acronis bootable media that you can use countless times on any number of PCs. It'll always work for you, and that's just how easy it is to make that. Now with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn this laptop off, so let's go over here and power it down. And I need just a regular Phillips screwdriver. This comes in a computer toolkit. These are little toolkits that contain a couple of screwdrivers and a couple common tools used with uh, PCs. And uh, I'll put a link to one of these typical toolkits. They, they run about 10 or 15 dollars. 
uh, also in the notes below this video. This video is going to have a lot of links to it. I'm going to just set the timer aside and I'm going to unplug the HDMI cable here and I'm going to unplug power and then I'm going to turn this over and we're going to take the battery out of it. There we go. It originally came with Windows 8. You'll see there's a Windows 8 sticker right there. But let me show you how amazingly simple this is to work on. There are just three screws here. There's one here and there's one here. And finally, this one here. And don't lose those, they're small. This whole piece will slide forward and lift off. And what that reveals below, memory, hard drive. Look at that. Look at everything you could ever want to get to. It's just three screws away. I've jumped ahead just a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just lay this back on. I'm not going to, I'm not going to secure it. I'm just going to just going to set it back on there. <clears throat> and what I need to do now is clone this hard drive. So we're going to take this brand new Samsung 850 Evo. So here's our drive right here. And this is just SATA on one end, USB on the other. Uh, lots of manufacturers make these. They're usually around $10 to buy one. Let me go ahead and take the Acronis um, rescue disk here uh, and plug that in and let's plug power back in in fact let me put the battery back in too like I said I got a little ahead of myself there we go. okay now for some reason it's having difficulty booting to the USB flash drive in the USB slot closest to the front of the computer so I moved it to the USB spot uh, to the, the one just behind it. There's, there's two of them here. So I had it plugged in this one. It just refuses to boot off of that. So I've moved it now to this one. Sometimes it can be a challenge, just as simple as getting something to, to boot off the flash drive. Uh, Maybe the hardest part of this whole <laughs> upgrade. And you'll see it started the uh, X64 UFI loader. Option one is a Cronus TrueImage 64-bit, so we're going to choose option number one, and it's going to load a Cronus. And what I'm going to do is set this other camera up here so you can see the screen. Okay, so now you'll see that everything got a bit dimmer, and that's because this is acting as a light source, and so the camera's adjusting for it. And what I'm going to do is grab the Samsung drive that we're going to upgrade to and we're going to plug that into a USB port. So I'm actually using all three of the USB ports, one for the, the wireless mouse, one for the bootable Acronis boot disk, and then finally we're going to plug in the drive we're going to upgrade to. And then we need to give that just a minute to be recognized, just as any U USB device requires a few moments from the operating system to recognize it. So the first thing I'm going to do is choose uh, Tools and Utilities. And I want to choose Clone Disk. And it's going to ask me what clone mode I want. I leave it on Automatic and click Next. What is the source drive? The source drive is going to be the Toshiba. This is the rescue disk that we plugged into the, the flash drive rescue flash drive. So obviously we're not going to use that one. And the Samsung doesn't appear because it's a brand new drive that's not even partitioned and therefore there's nothing to clone and Acronis is smart enough to not offer you that option as a source. So we're going to choose disk one and it gives us the layout of the drive here and we're going to click next. Now it's going to scan for potential target drives and that's when it should locate and offer us the option of the Samsung drive that we've got plugged in to the USB port. This process can take a few minutes so be patient. There we go. You'll see disk 2 is still the USB rescue disk that we booted to that has the Acronis software on it. 
We're never ever going to choose that option. Disk 3 says not initialized. That's our brand new solid state drive that's plugged into USB. We hit next. And what it's going to do is give you a layout of this is what the drive looks like now. And this is what the drive's going to look like when it's done. These are little partitions here, here, and here. And that this is not reversible. You're going to erase everything on your target drive. There's no go backsies. You cannot undo this. Are you sure you want to do it? Of course, this is a brand new drive, so we don't have to worry about overwriting um, you know, any critical information here because the brand new drive is completely empty. So we're safe to proceed and we'll click proceed. And it's off and running. Now, the Acronis uh, time estimator is notoriously horrible and inaccurate. Depending on how fast your USB port is, how fast your processor is, how much memory you have, and how much data you're transferring over will determine how long this process takes. Acronis always likes to say 16 minutes. That usually means about an hour and 16 minutes in my experience, but we're going to let this run and then uh, I'm going to fast forward it at this point to the end so you don't have to sit here and stare at it. It's like watching grass grow. Okay, so here we are at the end. You'll see it says that the disk was successfully cloned and of course the next steps that we have to take. So we're going to go ahead and click OK here and then we'll close this out and then we're going to shut the computer off by holding the power button in for up to 10 seconds until the laptop shuts itself off. Now with that done, I can go ahead and remove the Acronis Rescue USB drive. We can save that in case we need to use it in the future. I'm going to go ahead and unplug the solid state drive and we'll go ahead and remove the adapter here. That's ready to be installed now. So I can go ahead and remove power and we're going to remove the battery next. And then I'm going to take this cover off right here. There we go. And uh, decisions, decisions. Where do we want to start? We can pop the memory in easy enough. I've got the memory right here. I always want to bend the plastic to get the memory out and hold the memory by the edges. Avoid touching any of the chips or any of the little gold fingers on the end. Remember, you don't want to bend the memory module out of the package. You want to bend the package away from the memory module. There is a slot in it, so it can only go in in one direction. And you're going to line that up on an angle, as you see me doing here. So I don't know how well you can see that. Um, but here it is here. You'll see it's in the track. And it's seated so that the gold fingers are in the track or in the slot completely where you can't see them. And I'm going to push down on this very lightly. It does require a little bit of force, not much. And then it just clicks into place. And if that memory is compatible, we shouldn't have any problems. And I'll show you how we can test that in a minute. Next, I want to remove this hard drive. And that's going to require removing uh, this screw here and this screw here. Oh, and there's also two screws, one here and one here. So let me do that right now. Again, this is the perfect screwdriver for the job. These are little teeny tiny screws. It helps to have a magnetized screwdriver when you do this so that you don't drop the screws. They can become uh, very difficult to find if you drop one on the floor. So there's the four screws removed. And then this whole unit should slide. You see there's a gap here. It should slide towards that gap, and it did, and then lift it out. So there is the mechanical drive. There are four screws that hold this little metal hard drive caddy we have to remove and so I'm going to take out the two on this side once again these are really small screws so it's important that you use a magnetized screwdriver and have a nice clean working area so that you don't uh, misplace them you don't want to drop them they're very difficult to find replacements for And you want to pay attention to which direction the drive is installed so that you put the replacement drive in the exact same way. 
Which part is the front? Which part is the back? Obviously, knowing one will lead you to knowing the other, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this hard drive right beside it with the connectors facing each other like this. See how they're both the same direction? And I can lift this off and place it right on here. And that ensures I keep the direction of the hard drive installed correctly the first time so I don't have to take it back apart and do it again when I realize <laughs> it won't go back in. And of course these holes for the mounting screws will line up perfectly when you've uh, installed the drive in the right direction. I emphasize that because I've done it a number of times and I'm just tired of having to make that same mistake. So I'm hoping that you will learn from my experience and, and follow that procedure so you don't have to wonder, which way did this come out? <laughs> it's not the end of the world, it's just very inefficient. So here we go, there's the last screw right here. Let's put that back in. See how that magnetized screwdriver really helps me hold that screw into the proper position. And now we'll put that on right there. If it will find the hole, there it is. Okay, and that just gets tightened down to the point where the screw doesn't turn anymore. You don't have to over tighten it because all it's doing is securing the hard drive into this caddy. Then we're going to put the hard drive back in exactly how we took it out, which is the connectors are going to face uh, the plug and we're going to place it all the way here at the edge and seat it down and then we're going to slide it forward. It should just automatically line up. That's what that caddy does. It keeps the hard drive at the right position and it locks itself right into position there. And now we're going to use those four screws we just took out to secure it back into position. So there's one. Once again, don't over tighten these. They're just there to secure it in place. It's not going to be watertight or anything like that. Um, worst case scenario is that if you over tighten them and then later on you have to get in here for any reason that you could strip the screw or potentially break the screw trying to get out because you over tightened it. So always think about the next time you have to open it up that you're not going to uh, have a screw missing because you didn't tighten it or have a screw you can't get out because you over tightened it. So generally it's just a matter of turning the screw till it stops and that's it, no further than that. So, okay, this is the third screw here that's going to go right there. And we have our final right here. Now, normally I would just go ahead and power it on before I put it all back together, but for the sake of, oh, being confident, I'm just going to at least put the bottom back on it, and we'll put the battery back in. And plug power back in. Now the first boot may take a little bit longer because it's going to detect some new hardware, but let's hit the power button and hit the start button. And let's see how long this takes to boot this time. Now I did alter the boot order in the BIOS, so it was checking to boot, I think, from uh, a USB device. I might have to go back in there and change that. Look how fast it's already come up with uh, it's got a recovery here. Um, exit that. Let's reboot it. Not sure why that came up. This is a, a Windows 8 uh, BIOS protection is, is turned on in here, so let's see what happens. Uh, what I mean to say is secure boot. I don't know what I just called it. I don't know what I'm thinking. Yeah, we're so for some reason it keeps going into this um, 
into this restore area, this one key recovery. And if this happens to you, don't panic. All your data is on the drive, but for some reason, it, uh, I think the secure boot's been tricked into thinking you might have a virus. So I turned it off. I'm going to turn it back on. Let me stop this. Let's clear that out. Let's do F. Whoops, didn't hit it fast enough. Let me turn it back off again. Let's make sure our boot utility is designed to boot to Windows first. So we're going to bring that up. And then we'll exit and save. Let's see if I have any better luck there. Still may be secure boot, but we'll find out here in a minute. This looks better already. Yes. Okay, so we're going to do the timer again. So let me shut it off. And let me set the timer up so you can see it. Okay, I've got the timer out. Let's go ahead and boot it up and see how long it's going to take. Here we go. Eight seconds. We're already at the desktop. Let me sign in as this customer. There we are. We're signed in. So to verify, we've got eight gigs of memory instead of four. I just right click on the my computer or this PC icon and go to properties. And right here it says we've got eight gigs of RAM installed. I don't know how well you can see that, if at all. But it's there. And then of course uh, we can run uh, Memtest 86, which is a free bootable flash drive you can make. It takes about an hour, hour and a half to run through all 10 tests. And if it comes up without any errors, you know that the memory you bought is uh, functional and compatible with any pre-existing memory. Although it's not a perfect test, it's, uh, it's better than nothing. And if it does come up with errors, you will have to address that. You may have a bad memory module, purchase brand new what happens, or an incompatible memory module. Even if all the specs line up on occasion, you can still have an incompatibility. And um, I've got a different video than diagnosing RAM, so I won't get into that right now. Let's go ahead and check the hard drive speed now. So let me go back to the downloads folder here and we'll pull up crystal disk mark. Here it is. And we'll run disk mark 64. And hit all. Watch these two numbers up here. Remember what these numbers were before, right? I don't need this timer running anymore. Let's go ahead and shut that off. So you can already see, if I can zoom this in a little bit for you, let's bring it in. Much bigger numbers there. We're at, a, what was it, 100 and something, 100, 116, something like that. Now we're at 537. And let's go ahead and let that complete. And there you have it. These are our final numbers that you can compare with the mechanical drive. It's obviously much, much faster. Um, let me zoom this back out and I'm just going to wrap this up by stating that the last thing I'm going to do now is put the little screws back into that uh, bottom cover here. And I'm going to download and install the Samsung Magician software, which anybody with a Samsung SSD should install. It will uh, tell you how much life is on the drive, ensure and verify that you have a genuine, authentic Samsung drive and not some knockoff somewhere. And most importantly, uh, it enables you to uh, update the firmware if a newer firmware version is available. And I recommend you do that if you see that you have an older version of the firmware. Uh, if you're currently running the Samsung Magician software, you should always make sure you're running the latest version of the Samsung Magician software. As I make this video, version 5.2 is the current version. And this isn't something that happens automatically. If you don't upgrade it, it won't happen. So uh, rapid mode may also be an option you might want to turn on. Generally, if you have more than 8 gigs of RAM, you can use some of that RAM for caching and it's available on some Samsung SSDs. It will be an option available in the Samsung Magician software. If it's grayed out, that means it's not available for the Samsung drive you have. Not a big deal. 
uh, if it is available to you, you might want to experiment turning it on and seeing if you notice a, a difference in speed. Most people will. Uh, that's the benefit of caching. And there you have it. It's just that easy to upgrade your own hard drive. You don't need to pay somebody to do it. It's very simple. And of course, you can use a Cronus to make image backups uh, to use as backups as well. And uh, uh, you would just follow the same procedure with an external hard drive you have laying around. And that will do an image of your system. So if your hard drive should ever fail, you'll have everything. And by everything, I mean every temp file and every virus if you don't clean it before <laughs> you make the image. It literally takes every bit of data um, with impunity. So I hope you found the video useful and educational and uh, please hit the like button if you enjoyed it and would like to see more videos like this. Until next time, my name is Kerry Holzman and I'll see you soon. Bye for now. Now no sooner than I fixed that laptop then the next one came in and this is more along the lines of what I'm accustomed to receiving for repair. This is a budget laptop or it was in 2013 when it was purchased new. Let me give you a little close-up of this so you can see that when you pay less for a laptop you get less and just take a look for example here. This looks like it would be an optical drive wouldn't it? Doesn't it? But it's not. It's a solid piece of plastic covering the hole where a $15 optical drive would go. Manufacturers will take and cut every corner they can to bring the price of the laptop down. You'll also notice where the battery is. There's no buttons to eject the battery. Instead, there are two screws that have to be removed to remove this battery. Uh, that creates a whole different series of problems if you've ever used a laptop with uh, a bad battery before and saw the effects it can have. The actual motherboard doesn't even have a battery on it to retain the time and date. If you ever take this battery out, you lose your time and date, your BIOS settings, everything goes bye-bye. has to be reset up again. Well, that's going to wrap up this video. I hope you found it educational and informative. And as always, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.